channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes Firstly a very big thank you to all of you all my subscribers all my viewers who have been there with me throughout this journey 2021 is about to end and you've shown me immense love throughout this year so keep the love coming in the coming years and thank you so much once again so welcome to my video which is quantity theory of money keynesian approach so guys i've already made up a video on quantity theory of money the fishers and the cambridge approach the link for which i will be attaching below in the description i would suggest you to first watch out those videos you all really appreciated those videos and wanted this version which is which is which we study right after those versions so i would recommend you studying those versions first and then come back to this video and watch out where we'll be discussing all you need to know about the keynesian approach what were, what was his point of view how is this theory superior some criticisms assumptions diagram and everything so yeah let's get started also guys thank you for your love but keep your love coming through subscribing to my channel which is 5 minute economics hit that bell button that one button for you will mean the world to me thank you so much and do like this video if you find it useful also follow me on instagram on my handle 5 minute economics so firstly guys let me introduce this topic to you and give you a little background as to how this theory came into being and what were the criticisms or shortcomings of the previous theory which led to the formulation of this particular theory so as you know keynes who is the master of criticisms had highly criticized the previous classical economics theories he said that in the previous theory which we did you know the fishers and the cambridge approach there was a direct relationship between money supply and price remember when money supply increases prices increases we had studied that i hope you remember that guys so here he said that no that's not possible in fact the relationship on the effect of change on the quantity of money you know in the quantity of money will be non proportional will be indirect and not as simple as they have told secondly guys also the previous economists they had separated the monetary and the value theory and kept them apart from each other but here keynes has integrated value theory with the monetary theory also thirdly guys in the previous theories we studied that money is neutral keynes highly criticized on the fact and said in fact money is a link between the present and future and money is not neutral So firstly guys let me introduce you to the very crux of the video so two things have to be kept in mind throughout this video number one being so long as there is unemployment the output changes in the same proportion as the quantity theory of money so here what do we study here we have divided into unemployed and employed so here initial part till the time the resources are unemployed we will only talk about the change in output with the quantity theory of money second point tells that when the full employment is achieved you know all the resources are fully employed now now the price factor will come in so then the prices change in the same proportion as the quantity of money so i hope you are clear with the two uh, first two statements very important remember them throughout the video moving ahead to the assumptions guys so all factors they are perfectly elastic so long as there is unemployment secondly all unemployed factors they are homogeneous perfectly divisible as well as interchangeable thirdly there is constant returns to scale this means that you know with the increase or decrease in price the output doesn't change and the effective demand and quantity of money change in the same proportion so long as there is unemployment similar to the point number 1 when we are at unemployment the effective demand and quantity of money they change in the same proportion So now moving ahead to the main explanation of the entire theory what does it rest upon so pay attention so here we have seen guys that the change in the quantity of money and price is indirect who has told this keynes has told it he has brought in the concept of rate of interest which is written as roi which was till up to now completely ignored roi kya hota hai no one spoke about we only spoke about quantity of money and prices but he has shown that there is an indirect relationship on the prices when the quantity of money increases and he has brought in the concept of roi so what does he say when well, see he says when quantity of money that is the money supply in an economy increases the first impact it has is on the rate of interest so with the increase in the quantity of money what happens to our roi our roi tends to fall okay you can see the arrows are put it for the sake of your simplicity 
Now, in my previous few videos also, I've always told you in economics, ROI and investment, they hold an inverse relationship. ROI is also known as small i and investment is also known as capital i. And I always have told you that small i and capital i have an inverse relationship. Ek barta hai, to dusra kam hota hi hai. So when our ROI falls, what happens to the investment, guys? The investment automatically, it will increase. Now, in fact, investment has increased. There's, you know, more uh, positivity in the economy. Investment increases and definitely there is more increase in the effective demand, the ADS. I hope all you know what's effective demand. And with the effective demand being pushed up, being going up, what is the effect? Of course, there is an increase in the output, income and unemployment. So everything is pushed up with the increase in quantity of money. What you have to observe is, I've not spoken about prices till now. Why? Because we are considering a constant returns to scale economy. So prices do not rise with the increase in output. Over here, output ke barne se, there's no effect on the price till when? Up to when, you know, there is unemployment. But supposing, so this is, you know, one supposition. When we are talking about unemployment, then we don't show the effect on prices. Whose effect? Quantity of money's effect. But guys, when we've reached full employment level, which is a second supposition, you know, and during that time when there is a full employment in the economy, then the prices will change as the same proportion as the quantity of money. If quantity of money increases, prices increases. But this comes in later on. So what has to be noted is that up to, you know, unemployment is there till the time economy may unemployment here. We've not even spoken about prices and that is what is important because it has an indirect effect on prices. That's what, uh, that's what Keynes has brought in in his analysis. Only, only and only when we reach full employment do we show the effect of change in quantity of money on prices. So I hope you are pretty much clear with this. So moving ahead to the diagrammatic explanation of just what I explained to you right now, guys, don't forget that. So basically here we have two curves. One is the output curve, which is OTC, O, T and C. I hope you can see that. And one is the PRC curve, which is the price curve. I have drawn these diagrams adjacent to each other. So you need to draw it like that. Okay. So firstly, what do we see guys? We see when quantity of money is increasing, uh, the output is also increasing. Can we see this? 0 to T or O to T, whatever you can call. We are increasing that is the shape of a curve. But when we reach QF level, what is QF? Obviously, full employment level. Then our curve becomes output curve. The curve becomes vertical and parallel to the x-axis. Why does that happen? Because think logically in economics, use logic always. So when resources are employed there is full employment output kaise badegi output cannot increase then right so that time our uh, curve becomes vertical whereas coming to this curve totally opposite of what we study initially we see when you know our output is increasing the quantity of money is increasing increasing no effect in the price so initial part may abhi our price curve is uh, vertical up to pr you know pr sees the curve pr point the full employment that there is no change in the prices but now when we reach full employment level the point where the output curve starts becoming vertical is the point where the prices uh, the price curve you know starts sloping upwards which means there's an increase in the price when the full employment is achieved so up to full employment we were only seeing this effect price curve constant tha, straight line timing and then after that we see we reach full employment post that we see the effect is on the price curve and not on the output curve so moving ahead to the superiority of this theory over the traditional theory so guys Keynes as I told you showed the indirect relationship between quantity of money and prices through which he said that my theory is superior not showing a direct relationship secondly he integrated the monetary and the value theory which was kept apart before Thirdly, he brought in the concept of ROI, which was until now ignored. So that is why he said my theory is superior. Fourthly, he also said that there is, you know, there cannot be always full employment. How initially we assumed in the previous theories that there is always full employment. He said full employment is an exception. And that's why he demarcated between, you know, the first time when there is no uh, full employment and second part of the theory when there is full employment. So that. And lastly, guys, he said that, you know, till the time the economy is unemployed, we don't danger price rise, which is inflation. Only when we have reached full employment does inflation come in. So that's all about the superiority of this particular theory. 
So lastly guys, coming to the criticisms of this theory, which obviously led to another theory. So number one, a nature of money has been failed because why? Keynes thought that money could only be exchanged for bonds, but that is not true. Money could be exchanged for assets, um, securities and other things as well. Money has little effect on income that was shown by Keynes. However, Friedman said, no, that's not true. Money definitely has a very much visible effect on the national income. And thirdly, he had assumed the prices to be fixed, which obviously was criticized. These criticisms would definitely be more clearer to you when you study the next theory after this. So that's all from my side for this particular theory, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I wish you a very happy new year. May 2022 be COVID free and be the best year of your life. Take care and I will see you in my next video pretty soon.